This is an overview of the Alcatel Lucent 8068 telephone. We're going to go over the hardware and then we'll move into the features and usability of the station. So to get started, we're going to work our way from left to right. Here in the far left side, we have a 3.5mm headset jack. This is for any external headset you might want to use on the phone, and that's an industry standard. Next we have the handset, and this particular station has the optional Bluetooth handset. There's no cord down here at the bottom. You'll notice that when I go off hook, the phone gives a prompt on the screen itself and that these prompts change based on the call state. We'll see a little bit more of that as we go through the demo. Now as we work our way across the phone, we have the traditional dial pad with alphanumeric keys. And below that we have two dedicated feature keys, which are the off hook and on hook button. Down here we have the mute key. So if you're speaking on the handset or on the speakerphone, it will mute the station so the person on the other end cannot hear you. Another feature that can be enabled using the mute key is auto answer. If the mute key is activated while the station is idle, the phone will automatically answer incoming calls after it gives a burst of notification tones. So if I activate the mute key, you can see the blue LED indicating that that has been activated. So now if I dial the station, you can hear the burst of tones and you can see from the display I'm on an active speakerphone call without having touched the station. Next we have the minus and plus keys that control the volume level as well as adjusting the contrast of the LCD display. We'll see that a little later in the video. Then we have our speakerphone key. If you press that, you activate the speakerphone. You can hear the dial tone and the blue light above that key is illuminated. Go back on hook. The phone itself supports a wideband audio format, so it's a very rich speakerphone that's easy to listen to. The next button is the hold key which allows you to take an active call and place it on hold while you go and get additional information or make another call. After that we have a transfer key. This allows you to take a call you are on and transfer it to another extension, another group, or another number off premises. Following the transfer key we have the redial key, which has two features. A short press will redial the last number called, A long press will pull up the redial list and it will display a list of the last numbers dialed from this phone. So if we hold the redial button, here we have the last numbers dialed from this phone. We can use the navigation array to scroll down and select a number we'd like to recall. Press OK and that number is redialed. The next key is the info key, which is helpful if you don't know how a particular key is programmed. So if we press the info key, and then follow that with a key that we're curious about, for instance this D&D key, it takes us to a screen that shows us a description of what that key is. This key number two is forward to D&D. Now of course the C key I just used is the cancel key, which takes you back one level in the menu structure. So if I do as I did last time, the info key and the D&D key, I want to go back to the main menu, or go back one menu level, hit that C cancel key, takes us back one level. Next to the C key is the navigation array. This allows me to navigate within the screen. I have multiple tabs I can scroll to across the top, but I can also use the array to scroll vertically. So if I scroll down here, you'll see I have a number of speed dials that have already been programmed into the system. This dot in the middle shows me where I am in these pages so I don't get lost in the screen. If I scroll down to the bottom here, you can see these ellipses associated with these keys. That means the key has not been programmed yet. You have a total of 40 keys available to scroll through here, so you can program a large number of speed dials and other one-touch features. The button on the bottom right is the mailbox access key, and when I press that, it gives me a display of all my calls, my voice messages, and instant messages. If I had any voice messages here, I could select voice messages. I would enter my password, and it'd play the voice message for me. Press the C key to go back to the main menu. The five keys on either side of the soft display are feature keys. So whatever line is next to that key or whatever feature is next to that key is what will be activated. This screen can be customized. So right here you see a blank key, here, here, and these three. Those can be programmed with speed dial or a feature key, whatever you'd like to add there. The QWERTY keyboard is a unique feature to Alcatel Lucent phones, and it can be helpful for a number of features such as a dial by name function which allows the station to operate much more like your cell phone in that you can dial a coworker by their name instead of by a number. So if you see here we can dial the letter B for example, 
press OK. And we're given all the names that start with B. You can also drill down by adding additional letters. So if I cancel back, add B, I, hit OK. We're now presented with only contacts named Bill. If we select one, we're given some additional information that's been saved into the system. If we want to dial his number, we can press OK, and the number's dialed. To program a key, you simply first choose the key you'd like to assign. This key's blank, so we'll choose that. Here we're presented with the name and number that we'd like to program in, so we'll select name. I'm going to call this icon. Hold down the shift key to capitalize I. C-O-N. Select OK. The name has been accepted. Now we enter the number. 9 for an external line. Select OK, and the number's been accepted. If we clear out to the main menu, we can see ICON is now programmed as a speed dial number. If we'd like to program a speed dial for an internal number, we can do that too. So if we select, again, a blank key, so a name for this one, I'm going to program in TESS as a speed dial. So enter Tess's name, select OK. I happen to know that Tess's extension is 2330, so I'll go to the number, 2330, select OK, and that has been accepted. So if I clear back out to the main menu, you can see Tess has been programmed as a speed dial. If we'd like to delete the icon speed dial button, we simply press the info key followed by the key we'd like to remove. So hit Info, choose Icon, so now we can hit Clear, OK. That change has been accepted, and this key is again blank. When placing calls, we can either make an internal call, which typically uses a three or four digit extension number, or we can make an external call, which usually means we have to dial a nine to let the system know the number is outside the office. So to make an internal call, I simply dial the extension, and away I go. You can see the Teddy demo phone is alerted. I'll answer that station. And you can see we're in an active conversation. So disconnect that call. Now to dial an outside number, I need to start by dialing a 9, followed by the number I'd like to reach. I'm going to dial the main icon number, so starting with 9. Thank you for calling the icon voice network. And the call is connected. If you make a call to a busy extension and you want them to call you back as soon as they're free, there's a feature you can use called Place a Callback Request. To do that, we'll place a call to a number I already know is busy. As you can see, the Teddy demo phone is already on a call. The screen says, please wait. So what I can do now is select callback. The screen says booking accepted. Get a burst of tones there to let us know that it was accepted. Now what will happen when the Teddy demo phone hangs up, I'll get a notification on this station that he is free and I can call him. So if I hang up that station, here we get the callback recall. So if we want to call back the Teddy Demo Station, we go off hook. We can hear that station is ringing. Answer over there. Press mute. We're now in an active conversation. Now if I'd like to place this call on hold, I can select the hold key. We get a display change here, notification that this call is now on hold. If I'd like to pull that call off of hold, press that hold key, we're back on an active conversation. I can also use the fixed hold key down here to place a call on hold. You can see the display change. That call is now on hold. To bring it back, 
press the key up here next to that call, and we're back in an active conversation. To place a second call with one call on hold, we'll select hold. We now can see we have an active call on hold. And from here, we dial the number that we'd like to reach. So as you can see, we get a, a display change here showing that this is the active call that we're in conversation. And here is a second call that is still on hold. We can use the navigation array to toggle between the two calls. You see now I've moved from this tab over to the one on the right. It shows that the Teddy demo phone is on hold. Scroll back to the left. This shows this tab is the active conversation with the multiple options we can have here with the call. So if you want to toggle between this call and the call that we have on hold, tab over here. And if we hit answer, we're now on an active conversation with the Teddy demo phone. We can toggle back over to the second call that we made, select answer, and we've toggled back to that number. So to end this call, go back on hook. That first call is still on hold. We select that key and we're back in a conversation. To transfer a call, we have a couple options. We can do what's called a blind transfer, which transfers the call directly. There's no interaction between us and the second party. Or there's a supervised transfer, which allows us to speak to whoever we're going to be transferring the call to, maybe give them some details about the caller, or in fact pull the, pull the transfer back if the person we want to transfer to isn't at their desk. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to call into this phone. All right, the phone is ringing. We'll answer this. Okay, we are now in a conversation. So if I want to transfer this call, what I'm going to do is hit the transfer key, and then dial the extension that I'd like to transfer it to. Hit transfer again, and that call is transferred straight away. So now what happens if the person I wanted to transfer the call to is either isn't able to help the caller or isn't at their desk? What I can do there is pull the caller back to my phone and either transfer them to another extension or take a message. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to call the phone again. We'll answer the call. So now we'll do a supervised transfer. Hit the transfer key, the extension we'd like to reach. Station is ringing. We'll answer the call here. So now here's where we're able to announce the transfer, say here's who's calling, pass along some information. So right now let's assume that the person that I wanted to transfer this to says no, I can't help them out or they're, they're not at their desk. I hang up this phone. You can see that that call was released. The caller is now recalling my station. So what I can do is hit this pause key and I'm back in a conversation with them. So from here I can transfer them off to another contact, take a message, transfer them to voicemail, etc. To demonstrate conferencing two calls, I'm going to start by dialing my demo station. Hear that ring? Answer that call. You can see I'm in an active conversation. So to conference in a second number, I'm going to select the conference key and now dial the number I'd like to reach. station ringing. I'll answer this second station. You can see I'm now in an active conversation with that second number that I dialed. To conference these two together, I select the conference key again. And you see we have a graphic change here at the top. These two icons now show that we're on an active call with both parties. To forward incoming callers to another number, we use the forwarding key. It's at the top right here. So if we press that, right now we can see that no forward has been activated. We also have the options down here, immediate forward, DND, immediate to voicemail, and cancel the forwarding. So if we want to forward this immediately, we press immediate forward. And here we enter the number that we'd like to forward to. Press OK. And that forward has been accepted. So now when I dial the station, the call will be forwarded off to the secondary phone that I've forwarded to.
And it does. The secondary phone is ringing. So to cancel the forwarding, I simply go back into the forwarding key and select cancel forward. Cancel forward is accepted. Now when I dial the phone, it'll ring. We can also forward to an external extension. Select the forwarding option. Immediate. Dial the extension number. Forward is accepted. To cancel. Forwarding key. Cancel forwarding. To manage messages, we're going to press the messaging key. This takes us to the messaging menu, so we can see we have the number of calls at the station, any instant messages, the voice messages, we're also allowed to send instant messages from this screen. So if we select our call history, we're asked to enter our password that we set up the phone with. Now here we can see all the missed calls that are at the station. We can scroll down here see everything that has come into this station. We can also scroll to the right to highlight the All tab. This shows us all calls that have come into this station. There's a difference here with the icon. You can see the red indicates that that call was missed. The green icon indicates that that call was completed at this station. Now, if we want to go ahead and dial one of these, we select OK. That gives us a little more information about when that call took place. Now, if we want to call, select the Call button, and it completes the call. So I just left a new voice message on this phone, and you can tell because the LED above the voicemail key is blinking. So if we hit the messaging key to go in and access the voice message, we can see right here one new voice message. If we select that, we're prompted to enter our password. And from here we can see all the new voice messages that have been left at the station. Now to listen to that, we'll hit OK and play. can replay it, and we can erase. You can also scroll over to see all the voice messages that exist in that voicemail. There's still one in there that hasn't been deleted. You can select OK. You can erase this one as well. Message has been erased. Press the C key to exit back to the main menu. There are a number of ringtones that are saved within the system. If you want to change the ringtone on your phone, first we're going to have to navigate over from the main tab to the menu tab. From here we're going to choose settings, set, and ringing. From the ringing menu we have a couple options. We can change the melody for external calls as well as internal calls. We can change the volume level. We can change it to be a progressively increasing volume. So when it first starts ringing, it's quiet. If you don't answer the phone, it gets louder and louder and louder. So to change the ringtone for external calls, we'll choose external melody. We can scroll through and listen to the different ringtones. And press OK to select. Press C to cancel out to the main screen. Now to change the ringing volume, we're going to go to the menu tab again. Select settings, set, ringing, and now we select level. From here we can use the keys next to plus and minus to adjust the volume. And when you have the level you like, you can select OK. Cancel back out to the main screen. And now that ringtone volume has been saved. To adjust the screen brightness, we're going to navigate over to the Menu tab. Select Settings. Set. Local Menu. From here we're going to select Display and brightness. Now we can adjust with the keys next to the plus and minus the brightness of the screen. When you reach the level you like, select OK, and that's been saved. 
Cancel back out to the main menu. And you can see how it looks. The first time you set up your mailbox key, you'll be prompted to enter the system password. This is the password you'll get from your installing distributor. So we'll press the mailbox key. This is the password you'd like to use. Password is one, two, three, six, five, four. Storm, press pound to cancel. Press star. Record your name now to speak after the tone and press the pound sign when you've finished. Teddy. Play recording. Press one to re-record. Press star to confirm. Press pound. We can also interact through the screen. We can also interact with the system through the screen prompts. So to listen, Or to record. Please speak after the tone and press the pound sign when you have finished. Teddy. Play your recording. Press one to re-record. Press star to confirm. Press pound. Recording accepted. Now that our mailbox is initialized, we can see any of the messages that have been left there. Press C to cancel back out to the main menu. So now when we access our mailbox, we'll just be prompted to enter that password we programmed, which on this station was 123654. Thank you for watching. If you'd like more information about Alcatel Lucent phones or other cloud communication solutions, please give us a call at 972-929-9100 or send us an email at info at iconvn.com.